welcome, welcome to 15minute.church where we love God and we love others as we love ourselves. Praise God, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. Well, welcome to our Easter service. That's right, Easter 2019. And this is my very first time preaching an Easter service. So pray for me, amen. And it's about the napkin. And we're using the King James Version, the book of John, chapter 20, starting at verse 7. And it says, And the napkin that was about his head, not laying with linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Amen. Well, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, they took the body of Jesus to a brand new tomb. Nobody had ever been put in that tomb. They washed the body of Jesus, wrapped his body in white linen, folded his arms over his chest, kissed his cheeks, closed his eyes, and then they placed a napkin over his face. All of this is uh, according to Jewish burial custom. Now, before we get into the napkin message, our Easter message, let's pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for providing water, food, and shelter. Please forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, in the 20th chapter of John, Mary comes first to the empty tomb. It's early in the morning. It's still dark outside. She sees that stone rolled away from that tomb, and it frightens her. It scares her. So she runs to get apostles John and Peter, and they run together as fast as they could back to the tomb. She tells them that it's open. John outran Peter, and when he got to the tomb, he looked inside, and he saw Jesus' grave clothes laying in disarray. Then Peter arrived, and he also saw Jesus' grave clothes laying everywhere in disarray. But there was something very, very unusual at this scene. Something caught their eye that was very, very, very interesting. The Gospel of John tells us that the napkin that Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea placed over the face of Jesus, it was not thrown aside like Jesus' grave clothes. The Bible takes a whole verse to tell us about this napkin. And it tells us that this napkin was wrapped together are neatly folded and placed by itself, placed over to the side. Now, why is this so significant, I wonder? Why would the Bible take an entire verse to talk about this napkin? Well, to understand the significance of the folded napkin, you've got to understand a little bit about the Hebrew tradition of that day. You see, the folded napkin had to do with the relationship between a master and a servant. And most every Jewish boy knew this tradition. You see, when the servant set the dinner table for the master, they made sure that it was exactly the way the master wanted it. The table was furnished perfectly, and then the servant would wait just out of sight until the master was finished. Then when the master was been done, done eating, he'd get up from the table, wipe his hands, mouth, wipe that napkin up, and toss it onto the table and leave. Then everybody knows the master's finished. He's done. The servant would then know to clear the table because a wadded napkin meant I'm finished. I ain't coming back. But if the master folded his napkin and laid it to the side and got up and left the table, then everybody knows that folded napkin meant I'm coming back. That folded nap napkin meant I'm not finished yet. Now, <laughs> some of you may be thinking, hold on, Pastor. I thought Jesus' last words on the cross was, it is finished. And you know what? You're one million percent correct. You are correct. That was Jesus' last words on the cross. Because Jesus was finished being the sacrificial one. He was finished taking away our condemnation. He was finished paying for our sin debt wiping out our past, our present, and our future sins when he died on that cross. Yes, he did finish all of that. And now you may ask, huh, well, how can it be completely finished then when Jesus is still saving souls? How can it be finished when he's gone to prepare a place for us? How can it be finished 
when he's coming back for us. You see, he was finished paying for our sins with his life. But it ain't all the way finished, you feel me? For three days, all the demons of hell, Jesus, Satan, and the forces of darkness thought they won a huge victory. For three days, the Jewish leaders, Roman government, congratulated themselves, turned up bottles, pat themselves on the back of their brilliant skin, so they thought. But on the third day, the third day, something wonderful, something miraculous happened. God the Father in Matthew 28, he told the angel in heaven, he said, go get it. And when that angel's feet hit the ground, boom, it was like a thunder. That stone was rolled away. That meant it was time to get up. Jesus didn't hit the sleep button. He got up with the power over death. Now we can live forever. Jesus kicked death's butt. Remember, the stone was not rolled away so Jesus could get out of the tomb, the stone was rolled away so we could look in and see that Jesus has risen. Don't forget Jesus is part of the deity. He's omnipresent, which means he can appear and disappear as he pleases. He's God, amen? You know, Peter and John walked with Jesus for three years. They watched him open blind eyes, open deaf ears. They watched as he literally raised people from the dead. You remember Lazarus. You know, then they watched him die. And as they watched, all of their hopes, all of their dreams, everything, everything was shattered and obliterated. So they thought. That's what they thought. But just like the napkin said, he's coming back. It ain't finished. And that's exactly what happened. He came back. Jesus came back after three days. Not only did he come back, he appeared to hundreds of people. In Mark 16, it says that Jesus, Jesus later appeared to the eleven while they were eating, talking about the disciples. He got on them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe people that said that they saw Jesus raised from the dead, saw him alive. You know, in John chapter 20, the disciples are all eating together. The doors are all locked. They all scared, shaking like bacon. Jesus suddenly appears in the midst and he says, peace be with you. You see, Jesus just pops up. He's deity, you see. So after Jesus shows up and says, peace be with you, he shows him his hands and his sides. And the disciples were just overjoyed. <laughs> you know, Jesus just wasn't running around after he rose from the dead. He wasn't running around high, trying to be on the down low. Jesus, like I said, appeared to hundreds of people. Jesus is on the bike of the Sea of Galilee cooking breakfast. Jesus is telling, telling them to cast their nets on the other side of the boat so they can catch more fish. All this is after he's risen. Jesus is telling people he's going up to a place where there are many mansions. He's telling people he's coming back. You see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6, it says that after that, he appeared to more than 500 people. At the same time, most of whom are still living, though some were sleeping. That's in 1 Corinthians. He appeared to more than 500. So you see, Jesus left, also left us a visual reminder of his resurrection and return. Yes, you know, the visual reminder is something that we use every day. We use it multiple times a day. That visual reminder, what he left us, you know what it is. You know exactly what it is, but you just not put it together yet. Whenever we see a folded napkin, sometimes, sometimes, it should remind us that Jesus is coming back. That it ain't finished, amen? When we see a folded napkin, sometimes it should remind us that Jesus paid the debt for our sin. Sometimes, when we see a folded napkin, it should remind us that Jesus is alive. Jesus is still saving souls. Sometimes when we see a folded napkin, it should remind us that Jesus gave his life for us so that we can live forever. Sometimes when we see a folded napkin, it should remind us that Jesus conquered death and is alive. In John uh, chapter 14, verse 3, Jesus said, 
I'm going to prepare a place for us. And he's coming back so we can be with Jesus forever and ever. The, and then the next obvious question is, the disciple says, well, when are you coming back, Jesus? And Jesus answers this question in two places. He answers it in Matthew chapter 24, 43, and also in Thessalonians 5, 2. And he says, nobody knows the time or the hour. It'll be like a thief in the night. Hey, man. Well, let me say this. There are two kinds of people on earth today. Those that have already been saved and those that need to be saved. Many people have got this idea that good people are already saved and only the bad people need to be saved. Of course, bad people need to be saved, but so do the good people also. Let me say this as clearly, as clearly as I can. No one is so bad that they can't be saved and no one is so good they don't need to be saved. Amen. You know, I heard about a little, a little boy, he was pretty naughty, done something bad. His mama gave him a whoop and put him on punishment. And so about a week or so past, you know, he's looking out the window and all his friends playing kickball all that. So he didn't know if his mama was still mad at him. So what he did is in the, in the kitchen, they had a chalkboard that they wrote phone messages down and all that kind of stuff. So when nobody was around, the little boy went in there and wrote on the chalkboard. He said, Dear Mama. If you forgive me, then please erase this off of this chalkboard. Then he went to the room. About an hour, hour and a half later, he comes back, looks at that chalkboard, and to his surprise, that chalkboard was completely erased. You see, his mother did what Jesus did. Completely erased our naughtiness slash sins forever and ever, family. The sin that has been paid in full. The napkin is still folded. Good person or bad person, you need to be saved. I thank God today that the tomb is empty. I thank God today that he's coming back. I thank God today that he paid our past, our present, and our future sin debt. I thank God today that our Savior is alive. I thank God today that that napkin is still folded. I thank God today. He's not finished saving souls. Praise God. Happy Easter. <laughs> well, you know, if I was you, I wouldn't wait until it's too late. You feel me? Remember the prodigal son in the book of Luke? And he, when he came home, his father welcomed him home with open arms. The napkin is still folded. Good person or bad person, you need to be saved. So pray out loud. After me, we'll do like it said in the book of Romans and book our reservation to heaven. Say it out loud right now, right where you are. It only takes a few seconds. Here we go. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I ask for forgiveness. You died for my sins and you rose from the grave. I want to spend eternity in heaven in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, go to a Bible-believing church and tell them that you said that prayer, and they'll take it from there. So let's close with the benediction. May the Lord rest, rule, and abide with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen.